While sipping your coffee, tea, water, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, or beer, did you ever stop to think about the glass you're drinking from? Or did you ever wonder about the plastic can that holds the paint you use to paint your house with? <laughs> Probably not. Well, this is the story about a man who is today one of the biggest manufacturers of plastic packaging in the U.S. and worldwide. Lytica Corporation from Rochester, Michigan, produces 70% of all plastic packaging. Letica created the largest plastic packaging empire and is recognized as the leader in large container manufacturing. This is the story of Ilya Letica. I've known Mr. Letica since I became a candidate for statewide office in Michigan in the late 1980s. Uh, he was a prominent businessman at the time and uh, somebody that when I began to run for office, and I said, who are the influential people who, who can make a difference? They said, well, you should get to know Ilya Letica because he's got a large manufacturing operation, several plants, and that he's a very good community leader. He's a very, very, very good businessman. There's no question about that. Uh, his success proves that. He has not made any false moves that I've ever been aware of, and he thinks ahead, and he's got a great vision and uh, that's the reason that he's where he is today and been very, very successful. He's a man who is, is first and foremost interested in justice, as I said. And secondly, he's anti-communist. His youth in uh, the Tomislavgrad area uh, and his escape from behind the, the Iron Curtain uh, left him with a, a very, very bad view of communism specifically in totalitarianism in general. Mr. Letica and his family are representatives of uh, what is the most noble and most successful among the Croatian immigrants in the United States. I was born in Duvno and uh, my, uh, my whole family is from there. Early age of my life, was uh, before the World War II. It was a rather uh, very normal life. My brothers, my sisters, my mom, my dad, we all was a family unit, which we uh, obviously, I was the youngest, and the youngest child exhibits money privileges that other children don't. I remember my uncles, I would, uh, as a child, go visit him and he would uh, uh, run the candles for us for Christmas. You know, we, we burned quite a few candles in that area. And that is my best memory that I ever experienced, going to his uh, home and, and uh, contributing of making the candles and bringing it back home. Duvno an ancient Croatian town in today's Bosnia-Herzegovina, situated at the border with Croatia. This is where the first Croatian king, Tomislav, was crowned. Although almost all its citizens are Croats, the former Yugoslav authorities demanded that all official documents be written in Cyrillic, the Serbian alphabet that is completely foreign to the predominantly Croatian population. The man who initiated and contributed most to the erection of the beautiful church in Duvno was Ilya's uncle, Mio Chuic, a Franciscan priest. Other family members also participated actively in the construction of the church, whose size and beauty dominated the entire region. Being related to uh, from Mio Chuic, obviously he was a Franciscan. And my mom uh, was uh, coaching me to, to go in a priesthood. And that was, a, you know, from the early age, uh, I was encouraged. I would uh, read in church, uh, uh, Evangelia, and obviously that was 
Her drive to her goal was to have me become priest. The Franciscans and the Catholic Church had much influence over the Croatian population in this area. Obviously, that goes for centuries, the influence of the Franciscans in that part of the area, being the, as old as that town is. Most of the other uh, religions are very minor. Matter of fact, I have not known uh, till I was good uh, 12 years of age that the other religion existed. I was always having strength to rely on somebody else, on my older brother and my older sisters. And uh, I have, have nothing but pleasant feeling about my dad and my mom. And then when the war came in, that becomes a di different matter. Then we, we all shared in a misery of the political changes. But during World War II, the fascists set Duvno's beautiful church on fire and burnt it to the ground. Many years after the war had ended, the church was reconstructed. For a long period of time, the communists would not allow the Croatian population to rebuild the church, well aware of the church's influence over the local people. Ilya Letica, who had been a mere boy when the church was built and destroyed, supported the reconstruction. The war had ended, but Yugoslav communists felt that there were still too many Croats left. In Bleiborg, at the border between Austria and Yugoslavia, the British stopped and surrendered to the communists more than 250,000 Croats who were trying to flee from communist dictatorship. Most of them were murdered in subsequent death marches. Ilya's brother was one of them. Well, there were lots of prosecution going on. Bear, bear in mind, that was a one confusing uh, geographical uh, uh, behavior. And uh, there were quite a few of them were, some of them were living in, into, in a forest, some of them were uh, uh, captured, some of them were killed. I, I, there was a tremendous number of, uh, of uh, abusing the public, if you will, by the partisans. Priest was gone. Uh, anybody with some type of education was prosecuted for uh, similar reasons as uh, other armies was abusing culture of that area. Ilya remembers the cruelty of the communists very well. He could never forget the countless innocent Croats who were killed without a trial when the war had already ended. Ilya himself remembers some of the executions. Yes, I saw them because I've been a small, uh, small child. And as I would go by the street, I would see them transporting and moving them around. And, and they would look some of them bloody, some of them that came in from the war. They were uh, totally exhausted, uh, uh, deprived of food and medication and so forth. It was uh, one big chaos uh, existed. Because being brought uh, from a family of believers, I always considered uh, religion and democracy are together. After the war, Ilya's hometown suffered under communist tyranny. This is why Ilya's father decided to take his 12-year-old son and move to Slovenia, closer to the West and to freedom. My father decided, and my older brother, to place me in a school in Slovenia. And uh, that was in the 47. And I was gone from that area, and I have not gone back till maybe once or twice since that time. I was only 12 years old. My grade school was uh, always uh, easy for me. I haven't had a difficulty with, it, with school whatsoever at any given time. I was very much uh, involved as a student in their culture, in sport. I played soccer. I, I was running on a 10 kilometers uh, truck and uh, I learned how to ski there. Ilya spent several years in Jesenice, Slovenia. 
He was an excellent student and even played a small role in a movie. I was uh, playing a village boy, and uh, as I recall, that was the old uh, uh, Slavic uh, coming to the territory of Slovenia, probably at the early uh, 6th century. So I spent quite a bit of time <laughs> <laughs> running around and learning the uh, movie trade without uh, fully realizing what I was doing. Ilya's goal was to flee from tyranny and Serb-controlled communism and Yugoslavia. I escaped from Yugoslavia in 19... 51. There was two young boys, uh, 18 years of age, and we, uh, we run into this guy who was guarding the uh, one particular area of that border, and he took us, he wanted us to go with him to turn in to the soldiers. Well, we kind of had a struggle with him and uh, kicked his pistol away from his hand, and <laughs> he ran like hell across the border. That's the end of that one. First, he escaped to Austria. At that time, Austria was uh, divided in its zones. We end up in an uh, English zone, and then the English uh, soldiers pick us up. It took them two weeks before we get uh, permit to live in Austria. From Austria, Ilya managed to reach Germany. Despite the danger, Ilya remembers some funny incidents that happened along the way. We had tickets to uh, go to Innsbruck, and uh, we jumped a train, we crossed the river, we're going and climbing the mountains. We are on top of, the, of those mountains, and uh, there's this farmhouse. So we walked to that uh, farmhouse, and a lady came out, and she said, uh, we asked her if we could get some uh, milk and we're gonna give her some cigarettes. She said, fine, yeah, she, she gonna give us some milk and some bread. And we're talking to her and she said, where are you guys going? We said, we're going to uh, Strasbourg. She said, no, no, you are in Tyrol, you are on Italian border, you're just opposite where you wanna go. So we turned around, we ate there and go back down again, across the border again, across the railroad tracks, up and to the other side of, uh, to the German border, and then we slept in those old uh, uh, hay houses and crossed the German border. Then we went to, to this uh, German police station and reported that we come from Yugoslavia. Then the Germans took us over to Munich and gave us to the Americans. And the Americans, uh, uh, secret police for the military police. They investigated uh, the, the facts and figures, and in those days they were interested. And what I was surprised that I learned at, just as I was being questioned how much the American intelligence service knows about Dubno. He even knew the old expression, Rupanyas. He knew every tree, every Every village, every town, everything. Amazing how much information did they have. Then they took copies of our documents and uh, gave us the copies in the original, they took it. When I came to Germany, it was extremely difficult because everything was uh, bombed out. They uh, clean up the street, uh, open a little restaurant. Uh, the, the, various uh, construction company was cleaning and Marshall Plan was just getting to be implemented. They're just nearly gearing out of the chaos that they experienced in 45 and 46. And, and bear in mind that the rise mark was, uh, was hard, hard work. When you are a young person, you do not get scared. 
you know, you, you get involved with the, with the German uh, population. Uh, I spoke being in Slovenia, I took German in Slovenia, so I spoke some German at that time. We would go swimming together with them, we would go uh, dancing with them. I didn't have uh, no difficulty uh, being uh, friends of the younger people. Ilya soon began to suffer from nostalgia. This is why he socialized with other fellow Croats, refugees like him. We had a uh, Croatian uh, sort of a refuge uh, group that was uh, working together and uh, younger people. The older people was very rare, but uh, the younger guys were there and they did the same thing I did. Uh, it was extremely uh, important to keep the Croatian ties because they were there. They were, and then of course they would come from Italy, some of them would come from France, so who, whatever anybody ended up at that time. In Kaiserslautern, Ilya met his future wife Gudrun. They were in the same English language course. We were both uh, taking uh, English classes in uh, school and uh, I met her in, in my class and I'm still with her. <laughs> we had a one room apartment. Uh, I was going to school and I still had a job and I was uh, being a salesman in a firm that uh, handled the clothing. And I sold clothing and uh, earned a few dollars there. And, few marks, if you will. We always are a very strong believer that what we do, that we could do it as well as anybody else. Ilya never broke off the contact with the rest of the family back in Yugoslavia. He supported them by sending money. I would communicate with my father, with my mom, with my brother, and write the letters and send the package, send the clothing, send the various items that they couldn't get at that time. Ilya and Gudrun were married in Kaiserslautern. This is where Mara, their first daughter, was born. America was the promised land for Ilya and his young family. Their ship first reached Canada, where they stayed for a short time. The family soon moved to Detroit, Michigan, and stayed there. When we first came, we, we came to, uh, to Canada. And then, uh, we, about a year and a half later, Ford Motor Company was looking for the engineers for their aircraft in Chicago aircraft plant in Chicago. And I applied for the job to fill the f papers out. And I was in three months in the United States. And then I took a job with a plastic company in uh, central Michigan. And that was one of the oldest uh, plastic companies. There was only three in Michigan at that time. And while I was uh, in Germany, I worked for a short period of time as a student uh, for Badesha Anolin, BSF, and, and I knew about plastic. That actually encouraged me to stay with plastic. So then when this job at that company in Greenville became the available, then I, I, I jumped right at it because I believed in plastic. This is where I started my company uh, four years later. And uh, 1961, then I developed some new products and uh, I had some type of a partners, then I dissolved the partnership and I started Letica Corporation five years later. And uh, to me it was easy, after that it was very easy. I, I knew people, I knew uh, what to sell, I knew what to develop, I knew product line. I was uh, practicing about four years of engineering, 
consulting business. Consulting other companies, uh, I develop uh, for DuPont, uh, for Philips Petroleum, for various uh, big corporations, various product lines. And uh, then I, when the container come along, then I saw the market need and uh, I concentrate on that. Currently in the U.S. we have 13 manufacturing facilities uh, from coast to coast, uh, south and north, uh, roughly 2,000, uh, 2,300 employees. We uh, are the leader in the large container manufacturing and leader by that I mean is a innovative, uh, better organized, better financed, and uh, you have you have people. Every strength in any company is their people. When you look at Mr. Letica, my father, who started the organization and the culture that was developed within Letica, I think we have a can-do culture. Uh, we're tenacious in how we drive the business. Uh, I think that permeates throughout the organization from the standpoint of uh, from the people working down in our facilities to our corporate level staff. Uh, we have a, a culture that never say no to our account base. Lytica Corporation is very, very important in the city of Rochester um, for several reasons, but uh, primarily uh, the exposure that he gives to the Rochester area with his uh, headquarters being here in Rochester. Uh, plus he's uh, uh, done an awful lot when he purchased the property that his uh, building is on here. Uh, he dedicated uh, uh, some right away to the city of Rochester to extend a street on through that gave us a great tra uh, traffic flow. He has a gift of being able to look almost, they say, around the corner. He can see into the future a little bit and, and he has a good sense of what it's going to take uh, not just today, but what you'll have to be prepared for and be able to do tomorrow. What is Ilya Letica's business philosophy? Obviously, I always enjoy being a salesman by nature. I always enjoy uh, Walt. I looked up to people that succeeded because I, I knew one basics that uh, nobody makes anybody, everybody makes himself. Unless you make your own uh, uh, capital and your own money. So I, when I came to Michigan, the first thing I did is started my own business within uh, four years of my coming. I was able to balance my life on a, a whatever direction I would go. I, I was able to balance. It was at one time where I built, every 18 months, I built new factory. Alabama, Nevada, Oregon, Oklahoma, Iowa, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Kentucky, and on and on. Every 18 months we we were building new factory to meet the demand on our product. And what does Ilya say when asked how he earned his first million? When I was expanding the container business, uh, I needed million dollars for my machinery. And at that time, million dollars was a big number. So I had a friend that worked for Ford Motor Credit and uh, my bank wouldn't go. I asked, my, the friend of mine was working for the bank and I knew him quite well. I mean, we're still friends, he's president of the bank today. And I asked Fred, I said, I, I need a million dollars. He said, my people never gonna approve that million dollars. I said, okay, that's all I wanted to know. So I go over to this other friend of mine who was Mr. McGill, I said, Tom, I need a million dollars. So sure, we, we get you a million bucks. So he paid off the machines and I paid him uh, in a period of four years back and uh, his boss uh, asked him, go to Ilya, loan him some more money. Tom said, Ilya doesn't need any money anymore. <laughs> what exactly is business, in Ilya's opinion? You learn, and you, you become satisfied because you're learning so well. Uh, it is not the money, per se, that drives me. I, uh, money, to me, if I had 
$30 million or $50 million or $100 million, it doesn't make changes in my life. My satisfaction comes from the process of achieving. It's no different than a sportsman. A sportsman, he, he, he works for his self-satisfaction. How important is money in a person's life, according to Ilya? I do not believe that uh, money changes people. People change themselves because they don't know how to handle the money. Through my uh, 40 years in business in the United States, I met lots of wealthy people, lots of different people, lots of personalities, lots of political leaders. They don't even talk to some of their, some of their kids. Some of them, on the other hand, were very close to their families. So it is all up to individual what meant to them and for which reason. Although very busy, Ilya has never neglected his children and their education. I always spend lots of time with my children. Even though I work hard, but I I spend enough time on the weekends to take them on picnics, to take them swimming. I taught every one of my kids skiing. My strength, sharing my experiences with my children, my wife, and so forth. I am per se a warm person. I'm not a cold person. I feel a lot. If I design something, I feel for that design. It's, that design is important because it is my, my brainchild. And, and, and that is why I, my, my family is so important to me. It's still there. He's a family man. He, he's got, uh, uh, he's a very doting father and grandfather. Uh, he spends a lot of time with his grandchildren. He, he raised his, his children uh, not as, as um, uh, offspring of the wealthy. He, he taught them the value of the dollar. He taught them all to be independent. My kids are around me every day. They're managing our business. Most people don't get along with their kids. I, I love my kids. And I let them do it their, their own. I do not influence, I do not possess them, I do not control them. I don't want to control my, my children. I think my strength was because I was young, I was gone, nobody ever controlled me. Ilya has dedicated a significant part of his life to humanitarian activities. As you grow uh, financially, uh, economically, you also uh, have a privilege to examine uh, the, the need, why you're doing it, and, and uh, who gonna benefit by it. That's a measure of the man. Uh, somebody who, uh, upon becoming successful, uh, doesn't say this is only for me and my family, that I've got an obligation to give back to the country uh, of my birth, to the country where I became successful. He knows what it's like to be poor and, and uh, uh, underprivileged and, and, and uh, struggling for uh, uh, your very existence. I never did anything that I felt sorry that I did it. Either helping the Croatia, either uh, giving the money to the poor. Uh, I was the first one that paid full amount for my employees full hospitalization in Michigan. I didn't deduct it, I paid it. So that makes me feel good. If he were to start again, would he change anything? I do not believe that I would change anything. I don't have no desire to be any different than I am. I don't have any desire to improve any one of my kids. I don't have no desire to have a different wife. I'm perfectly content with my, uh, my doing in my life. When Serbian communists decided to wage war against Croats, who desired to realize their right to an independent and sovereign state, 
Ilya Letica became the first and biggest Croatian lobbyist in the United States. Ilya invested much of his time and money to spread the truth about his Croatian homeland. I cannot uh, ever separate my Croatian heritage. Reason I can because I, I left there as a young and I'm still designated in Slovenia as a Croatian, in Germany as a Croatian, in Austria as a Croatian, in Canada as a Croatian, in USA I'm Croatian. Everybody knows me as a Croatian. So if I am going to contribute, then I'm going to contribute smartly. In other words, to give Croatians are no different people than anybody else. There is some good ones, there is some not so good ones. However, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm going to contribute to their cause, for their purposes, then I'm going to use my intellectual mind to help those people correctly. And that is why when uh, Croatia was declared independent, that is why I connect them with uh, Rome, with uh, London, Washington DC, Bonn. Ilya always believed in the goodness of the Croatian people and the, uh, the potential for Croatia as a nation to take its place among the family of nations and, and to truly be uh, a, a democratic uh, society where people would enjoy much more economic freedom and uh, be able to enjoy uh, personal freedom as well. And I think he has been steadfast in his fight against repression and against uh, the kind of um, oppression of people that comes from autocratic governments where uh, liberty and, and freedom are merely words and uh, never put in practice. Because he understood that there was a grassroots movement developing in Croatia and that it was that uh, independence was inevitable. But he knew that it was not possible for Croatia to have independence unless the United States helped, unless the United States was involved. And he knew that in order to do that, you had to lobby very, very effectively, not only on Capitol Hill, but also with the uh, U.S. administration and the media. Well, I think it goes back to that's where his uh, childhood was, and uh, he likes to see or wants to see that area developed as much as it possibly can and uh, get uh, everything that it should deserve over there. And I think that's great that he's doing that. That's uh, more people should be involved in that sort of thing. Too many of them, when you get to the success that he's at, forget about where they came from and uh, don't extend themselves to try and help somebody else or help the rest of the country. What is Croatia for Ilya Letica? The mountains or valleys or rivers or seas or clouds or rain or snow are not my Croatia. For Croatia is not soil, stone, water. Croatia is the word I was taught by my mother and what is in it, much deeper than a word which brings me even closer to Croatia. The Croatia of the Croats with their suffering and their hope and laughter, closer to the people, and as Croat makes me brother of all people, taking Croatia with me no matter where I go. What is America for Ilya Letica? My feeling, my thinking, my, it's all America. I can't change that. My kids are all, my whole ties are United States. I don't have any ties in Croatia no more. The whole ties are in United States. America for me is the land of opportunity that give me the opportunity that I would never get any place else. Uh, people of respect, people of uh, importance of fairness, rule of law. No place on the globe exists today that is fully respected as in the United States. 
When asked what he considers the happiest day of his life, Ilya replies, The most uh, desirable time of my life, most uh, satisfying, if you will, is when the Croatia got recognized by international community as an independent state. That was most important to me of anything that I achieve, that I accomplish. Ilya is a great patriot, both American and Croatian. Patriotism is a respect to your heritage. That is respect to yourself, knowing that you have that something that you come from. Patriotism is an extremely important factor in a decision-making process of a political leadership. When asked about his political idol, Mr. Letica replies, Most impressive uh, political uh, personality that I met was President Reagan. Very uh, sincere, very able, and uh, warm person-to-person -person communication. He was the uh, most respectable American patriot. Despite the fall of communism, Ilya has not forgotten about it. I believe that communism cannot exist anymore, cannot, uh, just as much as Nazism cannot be uh, brought back in Europe. You cannot control people by uh, teaching them how to hate each other. And as long as you have political innovation to control people, you're not going to succeed. Free society and free people are the winner economically and intellectually. Ilya Letica loves to visit his homeland. He and his family frequently spend their vacations in Croatia. Ilya Letica is a kind and charitable person who supports numerous humanitarian efforts. He has never refused to help anyone in need, be it orphans in Croatia, disabled veterans, or the reconstruction of homes destroyed during the war. There were over 10,000 Croatian orphans uh, during the war from 1991 to 1995. And through our organization, we established the fund to help uh, the Croatian orphans. Mr. Letica has helped uh, over 100 uh, of these orphans every year uh, throughout the war. He has given over $200,000 just, uh, just for this uh, humanitarian action. Mr. Letica has such a deep love uh, for Croatia and for the Croatian people, as well as uh, for, for any, anybody in need that uh, I don't know that he has ever rejected anybody who, who knocked on his door. And believe me, there are many, many people who knocked on his door. Mr. Letica has donated much money to help reconstruct devastated churches all over Croatia. Ilya is especially proud of having contributed to the rebuilding of the altar of the church in Krasic the parish church of the blessed cardinal Aloysius Stepinac, who was tried and convicted by Yugoslav communists for protecting the interests of the Croatian people and the Catholic Church in Croatia. Ilya's humanitarian efforts enjoy the support of his wife Gudrun and the rest of the family. Mr. Letica is the type of a person that uh, if he tells you something or you ask him something, he gives you the answer. There's no further debate on it. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. He doesn't vacillate. Uh, you know where he's coming from all the time. And that's why I enjoy uh, his company and also doing business with him because you don't have to wonder where you're going to or what the next answer is going to be. He believed it was a good thing for the United States of America to become involved with Croatia to uh, the extent 
possible. And he used all of his resources and uh, relationships in order to, to do that. And it was a very difficult battle. But I would tell you that uh, uh, without him, Croatia would not have been recognized by Germany and then the United States. This was a man who I, I think just, just worked so hard, but as a result of that work and because he was uh, a smart man who knew what he was doing, uh, he built something that, uh, you know, is somewhat legendary. I mean, he built something that uh, many, many other people can only dream of. Ilya had never forgotten his roots, his homeland, and his people. Besides the U.S. Constitution, Ilya always carries with him a lump of Croatian soil, which he took from his hometown when still a boy. Today, this most successful Croatian businessman divides his love and attention between his family, his company that helped him realize all his professional dreams, and between the two countries he loves above all, America and Croatia.